So in this video, I'd like to answer the question, what is a mathematical operation? Okay, so let's think about the operations that we know about. Um, plus, minus, times, and divide. All right, all of these are um, operations on the real numbers. Okay. When, if I want to write, and, and I guess the thing about operations is, like, if I'm writing an operation, it's, it's something that takes two numbers, three, four, right? So I'm taking three and four, and I'm getting a new number, right? So I take two numbers, I have the operation sort of in the middle of them, and I get a new number which is my seven in this case. So I can write, if I'm using mathematical notation, I'll write plus as a function um, from two copies of R. So this one is sort of where the three is, this one is sort of where the four is. Um, or I should say the this one is where the three comes from, and this one is where the four comes from, and and it goes to back to R itself. And if, so let's see if I want to what, what and I want to why I want to say I want to I want to know something about these operations. Um, what what properties do they have? Um, so I'm going to list a few of those properties. So the first one is uh, this is associative. Associative. And what does associative mean? Well, that means if I add two numbers together and then add a third, that will be equal to adding, well, adding the second two first and then adding the first one. Meaning these parentheses um, right here are sort of redundant. And I can write this whole thing as a plus b plus c. So it means that the order in which I add does not matter. Um, this is a property that's fairly basic. You may have even seen this before um, in a maybe a high school algebra class, but um, it's kind of important. Um, it's really hard in mathematics. Like there are some things in in the study of abstract algebra that are not associative, but they're kind of hard to deal with. Um, what's another good property of plus? It's commutative. All right, that means that um, a plus b is equal to b plus a. I can switch the order of addition. Again, this is pretty self-evident to someone who's um, taken a high school algebra class before, or if maybe maybe even a middle school algebra class, I don't know. Um, there's another property of addition that I'm going to call identity. So uh, identity of an operation means that there is a very special number. Um, and that number is zero. And the identity property says the zero plus a equals a for any a. Uh, if I'm going to say for any a, the notation for that is for any a in r. And you know, I can write these for any shorthands up here for any a, b, c in r, for any a, b in r. And, and now I have maybe a, a very precise mathematical statement. Although you should maybe for now ignore the ignore this this what's called a quantifier. Ignore that. The real content is what's happening right here. Um, and the last property that I want to talk about about addition is the property of what's called inverses. So. An operation can't have the inverses property unless 
it has the identity property because zero is going to come up in this. But what it says is that I have zero, which is equal to a plus something, and which in this case is minus a, right? So for all a in R, given any a, any a that I can find, whether it's 5, whether it's 15, um, whether it's pi or 5 times pi, whatever I have, or even negative 5 times pi, um, I can take that number, add it to a different number, and get 0. And this is, well, this is exactly sort of what negative numbers do if you think about negative numbers. They're there you add them you add them to the positive number and it equals zero um, it's again something that if you've worked with numbers a little bit it should seem very very self-evident um, but now I sort of want to say something about why these things aren't necessarily self-evident um, and that and to do that I'm going to consider um, the second operation that I've written here which is subtraction and so subtraction, I can also write as a function from r cross r, the Cartesian product of r with itself. Um, if you don't remember what a Cartesian product is, you can just Google it. Uh, it's a set of tuples. It's, again, this idea of having um, this operation that comes in between two numbers and spits out a new one. Um, what what exactly how do we get these two numbers there well the answer from set theory is the cartesian product but that's not important i don't want to spend some time on this but the thing is what what about let's let's think is subtraction associative and put a question mark and maybe from the fact that i put a question mark um you can guess that the answer is going to be no and why is it going to be no and uh, well Let's just look at an example. 3 minus 2 minus 1 is, well, if I start with 3 minus 2, I get 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. And then from the other way, I have 3 minus 2 minus 1. Well, 2 minus 1 is 1, and 3 minus 1 is 2. So suddenly, my subtraction operation is not associative. And because it's not associative, like I was mentioning before, things which are not associative in algebra, in algebraic mathematics, in abstract algebra, and the way that mathematicians do things with operations, it's just hard to deal with. It's just a big, big pain. Um, and, but so, how do we learn anything about subtraction then, you might ask? Well, okay, we're going to kind of cheat. So we know that um, a minus b is the same thing as a plus minus b. And again, this is, this, this, if you've seen a bit of math, that's, that's even high school math, this should look pretty, um, pretty tautological to you. If you've seen negative numbers for any period of time before, uh, it should be pretty straightforward looking, at least. Um, but what this says is, if, and, and this is maybe a little bit philosophical, but minus b right here is a number, and plus is an operation. This minus here, I can think of it as 0 minus b, but as far as the real numbers, minus 1, right, minus 5, minus 5 times pi, this is a number itself that lives in the real numbers. And what I have in between them is a plus. So any minus, anything that has a minus in it, I can write as something that has a plus in it. So therefore, if I want information about minus, and I learn all the information I can about plus, well, I sort of know the information that I want to know about minus. I just have to make sure I include negative numbers um, in, my, 
in my study of the plus operation. Um, and so for that, now from now on, we're going to abandon minus and only think about plus.